Amen and amen. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you, Pete. It's a great, great hour for me as I come to celebrate 60 years of preaching. Uh, in September, about the 20th of 1949, I preached my first sermon in the Sky Heights Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. And praise the Lord. I still remember my first sermon. It was at uh, the sermon where Jesus said that uh, the king prepared a great feast and invited many, and he went out into the highways and fed them, and they all began to make excuses. And they all began to excuse themselves for this reason, reason or that one. Anyway, I, I preached my first sermon then, and I'm still preaching. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. I told somebody, well, I'm 85. If I can preach 15 more years, I'll be preaching 75 years. Amen. Amen. But I'm going to take it one year at a time. In fact, I'm going to take it one day at a time. And I'm so glad to do that. I, let me just share with you briefly, and I won't take too long. Now, I know the Cowboys are playing tonight. <laughs> I appreciate you coming. Because what goes on in the house of God is more important than the Cowboys playing football. Amen. Far more important. But I, I, I will say this, that you'll have plenty of time to get home for the second half. And that's the best part of it. <laughs> The second half, that's that's the part that's important, isn't it? Yeah. Amen? I'm going to digress a minute. I was in my jail ministry a year or two ago, and a black man that was about 35 years of age, maybe 40, uh, was in the chaplain's, chaplain's office, and they said, I want, uh, I want him to go with you, and you show him where to go. He wants to speak to some of these prisoners. And uh, he had an iron bar in his about that big around an iron bar. And I carried it. It was real iron. It was heavy. Steel bar. And anyway, he, he looked like a wrestler. He must have had about a 19-inch neck. I'm telling you, and muscles all over him. Anyway, he had been a he had been a uh, uh, a defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions some years ago playing professional football. And he found the Lord, and God saved him. And he went. He goes around in ministries talking to people that have, uh, you know, made mistakes in, in country. Anyway, he went there before this group. There's about 75 of them in this big, big room. And, and he said, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this bar. And he took that bar and put it in his mouth, put a handkerchief in it, put it in his mouth, and took it and bent that thing like a horseshoe. I mean, and he bent it, and it was real. I mean, well, I mean it's amazing. And uh, when he got through, he said, I just want to show you what God can do when we trust him. We can keep new miracles. But then he went on and told his brief story to him. He said he used to play uh, for the uh, California uh, somehow. And anyway, he was playing on the team that Troy Aikman was playing for and was the pastor. And he, they came to the game, I believe it was with Washington or somebody, where they were playing in the Rose Bowl for the championship. And he said in the second half, they met in the, in the second half, and the coach said, all right. All of a sudden, the was quiet. He said, we're two touchdowns behind. But he said, I want to tell you something, fellas. This is only halftime. The game's not over. We've got two more quarters to play. We're going to win. And they went out and won by a touchdown. And then he said to these fellas, some of you feel like it's all over. You made your mistakes and you can't go on and your life is ruined. But I want to tell you something, fellas. For the most part, as I look at your age, you're just in this at halftime. You've got, you've got two more quarters ahead of you in life. Are you going to win? I thought that was good. Praise God. But anyway, I, I am so glad to have a part in preaching tonight, my 60th year anniversary of preaching the gospel of my Lord Jesus. Dr. Dr. Taylor today, pray, praise God, preached such a good message, and he, he preached on the grace of God that we all want we are by the grace of God. I'm standing here tonight 60 years later by the grace of God. And he preached about God being faithful. And God is faithful, and that's why I'm here tonight. 
because of the faithfulness of God has kept me, kept me going for 60 years in the ministry. Praise the Lord. Let me just tell you a moment, and as I said, I'll, 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 I'll remember my time down there here on my message. I want to speak to you tonight on the message on the mind. And uh, I'm not going to be able to get through with one message. It's going to take two anyway, so I hope next, God willing next Sunday night to, to finish or continue my message on the mind. It's so important. But anyway, praise God. When I, I, was, uh, I was saved, baptized, and born again when I was a lad, and then I got away from God and got out in the world and sinned and walked in the dark. And then I came back to God and God saved me. He brought me back like a prodigal out of a big pen back to the Father's house. Hallelujah. And I was living there in, in Dallas and there's a little, a little church, Scott Island High Baptist Church right behind us. And I started going to that church and oh, I'm telling you, I enjoyed it. We just, I just went on. I finally, finally became a got married and I finally I became a deacon in the church, became a Sunday school teacher and uh, had a dear, dear friend that surrendered to preach and I said, well, this is great I'm glad you did this. And he said, I didn't do it, God did it. I had to do it. When I got home, I knew in my heart why it had been bothering me for about six months. Something was wrong. And I just wasn't happy. I wanted to do something and I knew so little about God's work. I didn't know God called men to be preachers, but He does call people to preach. Paul said, I'm called of God, separated to the gospel to preach the word of God. He said, man didn't call me, man didn't teach me, Jesus Christ called me, and Jesus Christ taught me. And I know that's true in my life. Praise God, and I believe it's true in for the village life preachers all over that I've been talking about. I read one time about a man that had to go out in the woods and preach to trees. He didn't have a place to preach, but he had to preach because God put it on his heart. And I read that and I said, well, hey, anybody would have thought that poor boy was crazy. But I learned and lived to experience the same thing. I began to feel this deeply in my heart. I didn't want to be a preacher. I didn't feel like I was capable or qualified to be a preacher. My dear wife didn't feel qualified that she could be a preacher's wife. So we were sold on it. We were just kind of going to preach. I didn't even mention it, and she didn't either. And I was working at the uh, Texas Pacific Railroad Company in Dallas. And at lunchtime, at lunchtime, on my break, I'd go down in the basement. Down in the basement, I told my Sunday school class about this this morning. I'd go down in the basement. Down there with big old drums and it's kind of dark and there's salt. I remember the sawdust was on the floor for some reason. And I'd stand in there in that basement in the dark and I would act like I had a Bible in my hand and I'd start preaching. Preaching down there by myself to those drums and I remember saying, why don't you come to Jesus? Why don't you come tonight? Why don't you do it now? <laughs> so I suppose anybody would have said, well, that poor boy's gone. <laughs> but it was so impressive on my heart. I finally had to surrender to preach. I preached my first sermon in September about the 20th of 1949. And I preached for 30 minutes. And the preacher said, man, I... I didn't think you was going to last 10 minutes, your first sermon. I said, man, I've been preparing that sermon for a year and a half. <laughs> Running from the Lord. Praise God for that. The Lord's blessed me through the years. He led me to Tyler. I preached out there for 13 years. I came to Fort Worth. I've been preaching here for the rest of the time. And God's blessed me. God's blessed me. I was pastor at Oak Road Church for 11 years. I was pastor at Oak View Church out here off of 121 for about seven years. Pastor out here at Davis Boulevard Church. Praise God. Hallelujah. And for about four or five years. And, and I, I'm just so grateful that I'm still preaching. Thank you for letting me preach. I'm grateful for it. Thank God. Amen. I still love to preach. And if I didn't have a place to preach, I'd find me some oil drum somewhere. 